greetings and blessings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. What joy, what privilege, brethren, we all have when we come together in one faith, believing in one Lord and mighty and one Savior, one hope of the world, one only assurance that we have after death. That is eternal life given in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus. I'm telling you today, we're going to be talking about the test is trust, not wealth. The test is trust and not wealth. Many times, many people think, now the blessing of the Lord will cause you to be rich, right? But the blessing of the Lord does not produce a trust. Trust in God and your faithfulness in His Word and you doing what He said for you to do actually produces abundance in life. And I believe that. I know a lot of people don't want to preach abundance. A lot of people don't want to preach about wealth and being rich. But you know, the Bible is full of the blessing making someone rich. And I want you to open your mind and stop being, uh, I don't want to listen to this uh, person preaching. I want, I want to hear from my minister or I have my chosen uh, special ones. Let me tell you, the Word of God is open to all and by the Holy Spirit when preached from the word it should bring life and I'm bringing you life I can tell you that I can tell you this that the scriptures that you will read and see is a proof that God wants you to have life in abundance to the full till it overflows we have a wonderful message lined up for you I want you to hear that I want you to take time to hear everything go through every scripture there will be scriptures coming on your monitor screens you can see that and I'm telling you, after we come back, the message you've heard, we're going to pray together and I'm going to talk some more on what God has for you. So let's go into the message and I'll be back to pray with you. Well, let's get into our, our message today because I believe the Lord's been showing some interesting uh, revelations and I want to share it with you. And I believe today after we are going to be finished, you will have a whole lot of information that you can win with. Amen. Okay, the message, if you want to write a title to today's message, it's going to be very interesting. The test is trust, not wealth. The test is trust, not wealth. See, I know we are preaching about wealth. I'm preaching about prosperity, what God said about riches. But the test is not about, it's, the test is trust, not wealth. So we're going to see uh, the balance of prosperity because there are a lot of people teaching about money. They are going to the extremes. Then there are people teaching about uh, that you need to be poor in the church and they're teaching the extremes of poverty. But I believe there is a balance. We need to believe that God wants me to prosper, but he doesn't want me to become too greedy about money. That all your prayer is about money. The prayer is much more about than money. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. Let's go to Matthew chapter 11. Well, get your paper, your pad. I, I love to teach because I believe it's not only getting excited about the message, it's actually learning uh, scripture by scripture, text by text, what God said about these issues. Now, I'm going to first of all continue. Uh, if you remember what we did last week, we talked to you. How many of you were here last week? Okay. Uh, and to those who are in television will be watching this. Just have to remember we're talking about Jesus being not poor. How many of you do you remember Jesus is not poor? How many of you found the scriptures? You wrote that down. Okay, those are very important scriptures. Now I'm going to add some more to that. And then we're going to see the test is trust, not wealth. In Matthew chapter 11, and I said verse 2 to 6. Let's read. And when John had heard, had a uh, reading from verse 2, right? Matthew 11 verse 2. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ or Jesus the Messiah, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, I, uh, Go and ask Jesus, are you the coming one or should we look for another? Are you really the Messiah or we should look for another? Verse 4. Jesus answered and said to them, Go tell John. This is John the Baptist. He was in prison. Herod had put him there. And later he, he was going to be beheaded. Uh, so he said, go tell John the things which you hear and see. Look how, what Jesus says, right? I mean, hear and read this. He says, the, verse 5, read. The blind see, the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up. Who? 
the poor have the gospel preached to them. He didn't associate himself with the poor. He said, you know, those who, who, do, who are actually begging and had, didn't have enough to live by. See, the Bible, when it says poor, is those whose conditions are so bad, they don't have work, they have to beg to live. The Bible, Jesus disassociated by not, he didn't say I was poor. He said the poor have the good news preached to them. What's the best news you can preach to the poor? You don't need to be poor anymore. What's the best news you can preach to the sick person? You don't need to be sick anymore. That's called the gospel. The gospel is good news. To the person who's frustrated and distressed, you don't need to be distressed anymore. There is joy available for you. See, that's the good news. So, he didn't say, if we said the poor, then we could have said spiritually blind. No, no. Jesus said the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor. See, he didn't say I was the poor. He said the poor. You see, he was talking about the poor having the good news preached to them. I just wanted that thought to be there. Let's go to Matthew chapter 26. We'll get there. Say, I'll get there. Why, why is it important to believe that God wants you blessed? You, if you don't believe that, you don't have scriptural knowledge, you will always think that somehow, whatever condition you are, that's God's doing or God wants you there. No, God is the God of increase. Say, God is the God of increase. God is the God of increase. Okay, here we are in Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 10. And when Jesus was aware of it, Right? This is about a lady, Mary, uh, had come, Martha's sister, had anointed Jesus' feet with uh, her tears, actually uh, uh, wet her, his feet with her tears, wiped it with her hair, and then later took a uh, alabaster bottle of uh, perfume, very one year's wages, broke it and put it on the feet of Jesus, and it perfumed the whole house. One year, year worth of wages. People said, it's a waste. Look at what Jesus says. And Jesus was aware of what they were saying. And he said to them, why do you trouble this woman? For she has done a good work for me. Okay. For you have with you always. Did Jesus say, I am the poor and you will have me always with you? No. He said, you have the poor with you always, but not me. Do you see that? See, when you read the Bible, see what it is saying. Jesus is not saying, I'm the poor, you give to me. No, He's, see, Jesus had all his needs met. See, Jesus was not here to build himself a house, get married, have children. He wasn't here to do that. He was here to die for the sins of the world. That's why from 30 years of age and then three and a half years, he did what he was called to do. He wasn't here to build a house. That's why he didn't build one. He had money. What did he do with the money? He put it in the gospel, gave it to the apostles and went everywhere blessing people. Amen. Amen. See, he had a purpose for that. But he wasn't speaking ever against money. See, why? Because you are here, you need to get married. You here need to build a house. You near here need to give an inheritance to your children's children. Now, if you don't believe that, then you will always fight something and you will never have that thing. Let me tell you, if you fight money, you will never have money. If you despise something, they will get away from you. It's very simple. If you talk bad about somebody, do you think the person will be around you all the time? Do you, you, will you have friend whom you gossip every time about? No. That, that person will say, what kind of person are you? You're always talking bad about me. Even if the same thing goes with husbands and wife, you keep pak, 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 about your wife everywhere, then what kind of wife, what kind of wife this is, what kind of wife it is, or what kind of a husband this is. You know, later, you know, sometime they will start getting away from you. Why? Because you are distressful. You know what is distressful? Yucky, man. Every time you talk bad about me, they start getting hurt. So the words can actually divide you. I was listening to, uh, you know, uh, audio Bible? Like you have Bibles and audio. So in my, my, my phone, I have the audio Bible. So I was listening to the book of James. And uh, I came uh, and I was listening. It came to the place where it said uh, about that time. And it says, the tongue is set with the fire of hell. If there is any place you can find the flames of hell, it's in your tongue. Wow. I, I preached on that, but then it just hit me. I said, man, if I don't use my tongue right, I'm going to put somebody to 
through hellfire. <laughs> now I, I could make people go through hellfire. You know, people say a few words, oh, you get hurt. Do you know words can hurt you? Because there's fires of hell in your tongue if you don't know how to use it right. But then you can have the flames of the Holy Ghost. And the power of God will flow. That's why when the Holy Spirit came, it did not come and give you muscles. It came and gave you a new tongue. So that when you speak, you speak life. Jesus says the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They are, see, see, hellfire brings death. But the Holy Ghost brings life. When you speak, it should be out of grace and full of God, man. I tell you, I get excited about that. Okay, calm down, right? Read the scripture. Amen. So she, she was uh, uh, anointing Jesus' feet. And what did Jesus say? Don't do this. Don't waste this. No. He said, let it be done. Why? Because what she is doing, look, look what uh, he said. For you have the poor with you always. But me, I'm not the poor one. You do not have always. He, he did not associate or even considered himself poor ever because he had the blessing of the Lord. He kept every command and he could claim every promise of God. Amen. So verse 12. And in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Did you know even Jesus when he was buried, he wasn't buried as a poor man. He was buried in a rich man's tomb. Think about it, man. Okay, let's go on. Matthew chapter 19. The test is trust, not wealth. Say with me, the test is trust, not wealth. Okay, Matthew chapter 19 now. We're going to go all over Matthew, you say? I don't know, just keep going. <laughs> yes, I know, we will. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 19, reading from verse 20 now. All right, you know about this young man? A young man comes to Jesus, Jesus, I will follow you. Right? I will not leave you. I'm going to follow you. Jesus said, Acha. go and keep. Uh, he said, what do I do? The question was wrong. You know, he said, what do I do to it, uh, inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, do what the commandment says. Because if you are looking to be saved, uh, have righteousness by doing, then you have to keep the law. But by keeping the law, you can't be righteous. So he says, uh, what do I do? So Jesus says, keep the law. And then he said, I've kept that from my young days. And this is the reply Jesus is about to give this young man. Okay, are you ready? Read with me, verse 22 and 23. And when the young man had heard this saying, he, okay, what did he hear that he went away? Verse 21. And Jesus said to him, I was reading verse 22. If you want to be perfect or complete, go sell what you have and give to the poor. Did Jesus say give to me? No. Did Jesus say I'm the poor? You getting the point? Jesus never associated himself as poor. He always says, go give to the poor. You understand? If you are poor, give to me, I am poor. That's what Jesus would have said. He never said, he never associated or ever said, I'm the poor. Now, when people see this, see, Jesus said, go sell all you have and give to the poor. No, no, no. Listen carefully. He wasn't telling him to become poor. Most people preach that they, they sell everything and give to God and live a poor life. No, no, no. I will show you through scripture in a moment. That's why I want you to hold on, okay? And those who will be watching this, don't shut off the TV. Just hear me through as I lay out the case for this truth. Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Verse 22. And when the young man heard the saying, he went away sorrowfully or very sad, for he had great possession. I want to add one more part into that place. Not only did he have or had great possessions, actually great possessions had control of him. Did you know people can have control by wealth? They might have money, but actually money or wealth is controlling them. Did, did you know that money can control your life and money will tell you what to do, how to behave rather than you controlling it? It is true. I will show you. Jesus actually said either God become your God or money can become your God. He didn't say the devil. He, God, the Lord never compares himself with the devil. But you can compare yourself with something very earthly, which is actually very degrading. I'll show you. Okay. Say with me. All right. So what did he do? He said, I'm going to go away. I can't do this. Verse 23. 
read. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly I say to you, this is the religious messages, okay? It is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. There you go. No, it says it is hard for rich people to enter the kingdom of heaven. At this, it is hard for those rich people who trust riches to enter the kingdom of heaven. Who put their faith in their ability, in their wealth, in their possession. Okay? Why did you see the Indian people? Look at it. Okay. I'm always, I'm always interested when people say mahe, bab ka hai, You know, these movies always show the ma is alive. The dead always dies. Why don't they say mere pas bab hai? Well, the believers should say, I have a father. We actually have a song. I have a father. What a good song that is. Some people are still holding to Mother Earth. Did you know there's nothing as Mother Earth in the Bible? There's only Father God. Ouch. You know, I know there is thrilling and pulling. You know, the pulling and the thrilling. No. Okay. In Hindi, when you read the Bible, they call the Bible, Kheti hai. There is one place you ca- pustak the when you call the Bible you call wh- whenever it's a book you actually call it out of as a woman as a kati hai as a because of some religious belief they I won't go there okay so when it comes to the Bible you can't ever say Bible kati hai Bible kahta hai I don't know how many of you got that how many of you got that Bible is not a she that says Bible is a he God only says I am the he there it is. Go and read the Bible. He, but the he and the she is not about gender. Did you know that? Okay. Did, in the Bible, did God ever say, you are my daughters? He always says, you are my sons. Why? Lord, what about the ladies? They came out of men. You are one. God never sees gender, only men. Male, female. I won't go to others. <laughs> Let's not go there. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. <laughs> Yes. I'm a little bit of a dress. I'm going to put a photo of my son. I'm going to put a photo of I'm telling you, if you ever put up your son and daughter and, and try to make them look like a boy who, and a, it's a girl and a girl, like, look, don't you ever do that. Don't you ever call those things that be not as though they were. As though they were. Train up the way the child should go. Train them in the words of God. Tell them who they are. Don't let the society tell you who they're supposed to be. Don't let them think. A 14 year child cannot think for themselves. Did you know that? I've seen some grown-up people can't think for themselves. <laughs> they are married. Mommy, go and check it out. All right, coming back to the word of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Make the decisions, man. Know what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. Say, so grow, grow up. Where are we? <laughs> and... and, and and verse, let's go read that verse 23. And Jesus says, surely I tell to you, it is hard for those who, tr- for a rich man who trusts in his riches to enter the kingdom of heaven. Then the disciples said, man, it's going to be hard. He said, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle. That was a door very low through which the, uh, the camels could even go. But the, he said, the rich man, very hard for them to enter the kingdom of heaven. The disciples were greatly astonished and they said to who then can be saved? Because they also were rich. Do you see that? But Jesus looked around and said to them, with men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. He did not say they cannot go to heaven. He said it might be hard, but it is possible. But see, he was talking about those who are not saved. And he was also talking, see, I will show you if you could, if you would listen to the next session, because I will just tell you the the, the title of the next uh, service and the next uh, uh, message that we're going to bring. It is God is not against you being rich. That's one, the next service, okay? I'm just giving you Trailer, if you stay, you can hear. If you go, next time when it comes on television, you hear that. God is not against you being rich. And I will prove it from scripture that when, how God blessed the Old Testament people because they just obeyed God. And you know, he just didn't bless them. Bless you. Not this bless you or bless you. No, no. He blessed them with silver and gold and wealth and riches and camels and and more. 
like more, no, not like more, like more, or moo, whatever. Praise God. All right, you got that. Let me show you where the problem lies. Go to Luke chapter 19. So you say, uh, many people say, you see, Jesus was against the riches, so you being rich, uh, and you know what? Uh, he, was, uh, he was going to take away the money. Now, if Matthew 19 talked about a man who walked away from Jesus, Luke 19 talks about a man who actually did opposite of what he did. Okay, do you know Matthew 19 what happened? When Jesus gave an offer to this rich man, he walked away. He said, I can't depart from my wealth. There's another person in Luke 19 whom Jesus doesn't even say a word. Let's read. Luke 19 verse 8. Let's read from verse 8. You go and read the other story about Zacchaeus climbing up a tree. Okay. That, um, that's for the Sunday school time. Okay. Verse 8. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord. Now Jesus is in, in his house having supper. And people are complaining. Why did Jesus go to this rich man? A very a sinner man's house. It's always that the point. Eh? When you have money, people say you must have sinned to get the money. Can't they work hard to get the money? Are, are you with me? Okay, all right. But it's okay, people will judge you. So it says, says and, and so Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, who's the Lord? Jesus, Yeshua. Look, Lord, master, I give half of my goods to the poor. Didn't give to Jesus. He didn't see Jesus as poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusations, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man did not, uh, did not come to seek and save, which, uh, uh, for the son of man has come to seek and save which was lost. Wait, 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 wait. Think about that. One man, Jesus gives him the offer. Go sell what you have and give to the poor and come follow me. He said, I can't give away. You are giving me a very bad proposal. With this proposition, I will become poor. But here, this man gets saved. He wants Jesus. Say, wants Jesus. He wants salvation. He wants to know God. Jesus goes to his house and he just stands up and says, I'm going to give my half, half my wealth to the poor and whatever I took by false accusation, I'm going to return fourfold. Wait, what's this giving all about? You get that? This man all his life thought by taking more, I will become secure in life. See, your life is not about wealth, but life is wealth. How many of you saw that? See, life is not how wealthy you are, because life itself is wealth. Because if you have Christ, is your life, you will become wealthy in life. You see that? But most times people think, if I have wealth, and then if, he, if I don't go to church and things don't work out, it's okay. As long as I have wealth, let me tell you, you're a very poor person without God in your life, without salvation in your life. Because with all your wealth, I'll show you what happens in a moment, in a moment's time. Okay, so here is Zacchaeus who's going to give all away. Now, what does it mean to give all away? Is he becoming poor? Was he becoming poor by giving it all away? No. I will show you. Go to Proverbs chapter 13. Verse 7. I'll show you a principle that was walking and even Jesus gave that principle to this rich man, but he couldn't understand that. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 7. Okay, what does it say? Are you there? Read. There is one who makes himself rich yet has nothing. Who was this? The young rich man. He was wanting to keep himself rich and yet he doesn't have anything. Next line, read. The and one who makes himself poor or gives away and yet has great riches. What irony, what is this all about? It is about this. When you give, actually God says when you sow, it comes back double. You can't give to the poor and the Lord not return back to you. 
How many of you understand that? See, you can't give to God's work and so the good news can go to others and you, you not been blessed back by God. Let me tell you, the proposition Jesus gave to the young rich ruler wasn't for him to become poor, was actually to become more wealthier in the good works that he can do for God in life because it's not about how much you have for you it's how much you can share with what you have with you Amen. i'll say that again it's not about how much you have for you it's how much you have not only for you but that you can share because wealth is not about how much you can eat because you can eat as much as your stomach will get tight but you can have so much food you throw away because that much of food you can bless somebody else with how many of you understand that? If it's good enough, not, it's not bad to have five cars with you. But what about having two cars with you, which you can drive twice, but at least sell a couple of them and help somebody else? Come on. See, we people who know Jesus were supposed to be blessed to be a blessing. You weren't called to be a blessed to look after yourself because that is called selfishness. How many of you understand that? See, while you're buying yourself something, are you thinking about somebody else you can buy something for when you have something extra on you? I'm not saying when you are just buying and you have enough. I'm talking when you are too blessed to be stressed. You are too blessed to that you even give away hundred, a couple of thousands of dollars and you don't still feel a pinch. See, that's how God wants you to think. Being blessed to be a blessing. Being blessed to be a blessing. Being blessed to be a blessing. When you're standing in the counter, check out line, and, and if people are shopping, and then there are times some people are counting change to give, and you say, oh, I'll just pay. And they look at your face. Oh, it's okay. You don't have to know me. Just go. Keep going. How many of you understand that? Well, I won't do that. That's why you are not rich. Sure. Oh, but brother, I've got good big bank statement. I've got good amount of money fixed. and it doesn't make you rich because you can't give. Rich people in God's eyes are givers. Amen. No, 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 wait, wait. They don't give like put my name on the board and know how much I gave to this foundation and my name is on the foundation. Brands. <laughs> or Prasad's Hall of Fame or whatever. It doesn't matter. It, see, Bible says when you give with your right hand, right hand don't let your... It's like, I'm done with that, brother Brian, who has given us $10 dollars. Done with it. Clap. Amen. 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 Oh, boy. What do you want for that? Well, I want people to know I gave. Instagram, photo, keep picture. Smile or what, do whatever you do. See, that, that's, that's, that's gone too far now. Rich people in God's eyes are like Jesus. Did you know? Do you see anywhere apart of few glimpses of how much Jesus gave? You can hardly know, right? Because Jesus practiced what he preached. He blessed so many people. He was a giver. That's why it's written in the book of Acts. Because Peter knew. Peter said that. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with power who went about doing good. Man, he said he was doing good. See, Jesus was not doing bad. He, in life, he was doing good. And not only was he doing good, he was doing good with the good life he was doing. How many of you are doing understanding? Okay, let's go on. So giving doesn't broke, break you. Giving makes you. Giving to God doesn't break your pocket or a bank account. It actually makes you. What does the blessing do to you? The blessing of the Lord maketh. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, adds no sorrow. Oh, but brother Brian, we have no work, 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 that's all I want. I just want, to, I just want to go to heaven and just praise the Lord. I have problem with that. I really have problem with that. You're just thinking about yourself. Did you know if you need $100, pray God for $500. You say, why? So that you keep your $100 and give that $400 to us so we can do the gospel work. Amen. Oh no, I'll give you $250. No, you said $100. You only pray for $100. You keep your $100 with you. <laughs> See, if God, can, if, no, if God can give you your needs, He can give you a little bit more. He's not that cheap old God. He's an abundant almighty God. 
It's not a discounted God. Okay, you pray, but I'm discount it. He's not discounting giving how much he was going to give. He said, open your mouth big and I'll fill it. You understand what that means? How big can you open your mouth? Uh, uh, I don't know. That's why you don't have it. You can't open it. You know, ask the ladies. They can open their mouth. They can ask big. You know why they don't ask? They look at the man's face. They said, okay, leave it. Just leave it. Leave it. Don't want to talk about that. Because the man goes, hmm? Like, huh? You know, we become so earthly considerate, considerate in our mind, thinking about our, our limitation, that when we go to the Almighty, we think about, uh, God, just give me just the need today. That's all. I know. And my lurker, my adri, my wife, my car. Just, that's all, Lord. Just uh, a little bit of vehicles and I need a little bit of house. That's all, Lord. Just, just. just. And, and save some people and help Brother Brian, Lord, help Brother Brian. <laughs> What you see? What you doing before the king? L literally, the God must be seeing. Angels are saying, "No, no Lord, <laughs> that's your children, Lord. What can we do?" That's why I'm preaching this message, so that when you pray, you're not praying for yourself; you are praying for others also. You're believing for others also. If you have a neighbor, you want to help them and their children are going to school. You want to be preparing now to buy them their books next year. You want to be preparing for their bags next year. See, don't just think and pray. See, I tell you, rich people think about others. Amen. And Jesus said, you are blessed. Amen. Christmas time. What do you do at Christmas time? <laughs> I just, I'm just waiting for Bakri. <laughs> what do you do? Only Bakri for who? For my family, of course. Of course, yes. What about others? Father Christmas looks after them. <laughs> you should look after them. You can be a blessing. How many packs have you distributed? Not church, you. Oh, I thought the church should distribute. No, what about you? We've done it many times. What about you? You can do it. You can make a, make a cake, pack a pack, and just go around and say, Lord, lead us. Go, take a ride somewhere. We took a ride towards the... No, no. Just tried. Where, where did it go? Now go aside. And on the way, whoever fi you find and you see, you can tell, you can tell. Some people are looking like this. Somebody will bless me. Hey, come here. Oh, the children especially, they run. Hey, just, just. Am I shaking a little bit? If I am and I'm happy, you should be shaken because you need to be a blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let's go do this thing. And we'll finish. Matthew chapter 6. The test is trust, not wealth. How many of you are understanding it now? It's not how much you keep, it's how much you can give away for the kingdom. How much the Lord can walk through your life. See, if God wants to take you to a million, He has to first start with the ten, then go to the hundred, then go to the thousand. You know, I tell you, if your increment in life wants to grow, your giving in life must grow. In Christ, it's actually sowing and reaping. Hey, praise the Lord. Okay, now let's look at the most famous scriptures that Jesus preached on the Sermon on the Mount. And then we will tie it up with Jesus, what he said that Matthew didn't record. I don't know why Matthew didn't record that part. But it's actually said by Jesus that I will read from Luke's gospel and show you another portion of scripture that was supposed to be said in line with this. That's why people understand half of it. Uh, are you in Matthew chapter 6? Verse 19. All right, let's read. Two, three. Do not lay for, right? Do not lay up for yourself treasures or wealth in earth, on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. Okay, Lord, what do we do? Read on. But lay for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What he's saying is, even if you have wealth on earth, make sure you are first wealthy in God's eyes, then before you are wealthy in your eyes. Because if you protect your wealth, trusting this, if I let this go, my life will become poor. No, actually the proposal is, Jesus is giving you the proposition is, if you give to the kingdom, you actually become rich. That means you can take away all my money from my bank account, the economy must crash, everything is not backed up. Did you know your dollar must be backed up with the amount of money the government has in order to, for that to hold that currency? Okay, most people didn't understand what they said, don't think about that. But, but what I'm saying is, is this, the money might fail. Did you know money will fail one day? 
Do you know that? The Bible says money will fail. Economies will fail. Things you put your security in fail. Then what do you do? How will we eat? How will we drink? How will we raise up our children? How will we buy the milk? If, for example, like we know, anything crises can happen. The borders can be closed down. You know, ships can hold up all so many things of transportation and things that you believe would run your life is locked somewhere. What are you gonna do? <gasps> don't tell me that's this darkness story. No, you don't have to be afraid. What did God say? How does man live? By the every promises that God gives you. So how did God look after the children of Israel? They had no shopping mall in the wilderness, did they? The Bible says their clothes on them did not wear out. 40 years. How many husbands want their wives to have clothes like that? It doesn't go wear out, man. And, and shoes that didn't wear out. They didn't have a, a, a mobile hospital go with them. No, God just instructed, do this, you won't be sick. For 40 years, they were not sick. They were not broke. They were not poor. They were not hungry. They didn't have sickness except for the ones they disobeyed and got slapped by God. Actually, they got disobedience cost them. 40 years, man. Think about that. Not one leg. They want a chicken in the wilderness. God said, okay, I'll give you quills. That's kind of chicken, right? And he rained it down. Gave them manna, heavenly bread. Water from the rock. Think about that. Who could have done that? God. If the same God that could look after the children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years, he's saying, don't you think if I said I'll keep after you, I'll protect you. Don't you believe my words? Don't you believe my words? I love you. Don't you believe I have got you covered? No, I need an insurance cover. Yes, you need, but you need the covering of God before you need a surveillance camera. Because I've seen there's the thieves are stealing and going, but it's, you'll give it to the police, it won't matter much. It's gone. Things not coming back. How many of you understand? You need security that comes from heaven. Amen. You need protection and provision that your father has promised. Not what the government and the world promises. Not what your husband and your wife and your boss promises. Because they promise today, they can turn tomorrow. But my God... Hallelujah. But God is on my side. If I burn, doesn't matter because I know He will save me. If, if the three boys could get saved by the fire and uh, Daniel through the lion's mouth, how about you, man? <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to make it. Say, we're going to make it. And when the Antichrist comes and he wants to put his mark, tell you what, he will be waiting for catch all the Christian people and put the mark on them. Guess what? He won't be able to. Why? We'll be gone. You look for me, you'll find my clothes somewhere, but you won't find me. What about you? You going in the first load or? <laughs> See, don't miss this bus because this bus comes once and finish. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, let's read. Where are we? So uh, most people say, see, Jesus said, you should not, uh, your treasure, it's all about the treasure. Listen what he said carefully. He said, it's not about treasure. It's where your heart is in the treasure. See, he's concerned with where your treasure is, there your heart is. Let your heart be in me. Okay, verse 24. See what he says. No one, I told you, I'll tell you this. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate or love less one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and Mammon, which is money. It was a God of money, right? Mammon. So what is Jesus comparing uh, uh, him, a uh, God compared in, ter in terms of teaching about this heart issue? What did he compare your heart to be divided with? Money. The, your absolute trust in your job, the security you find that you have enough and it's well. Let me tell you, it's good to have money. It's good to be secure. I'm not against that. All I'm saying is when you're believing is the security, the money you put in the bank and the securities you've taken, all your security is the said the Lord. Because your security must come from God and in God I put my trust. And how do you know you will be taken care of? Because I put seed in the ground. <laughs> I say that again. I'll say that again. How do you know your needs are going to be met? Because I put seed in the ground. Because I gave to the poor. 
Because the Bible says, he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord and the Lord will repay him. Interest paid together. But you, you know the scriptures, you'll be a very, very happy person. No matter what happens on the, on the world since today, you will not be discouraged or afraid. So don't let your heart be divided between money and God. Let God be God. Okay, let's go on. Verse 25. You ready to read verse 25? We read a couple more scriptures and we add. Therefore I say to you. See, the, the, why is therefore therefore? Let's go and see why therefore is therefore. After that comparison, Jesus says, you know why money is not supposed to be your God and God's supposed to be your God? He said, therefore I say to you. He's concluding something. Do not worry. Or be over anxious about your life. What did I say about life and wealth? Don't compare life with wealth because life is wealth. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will, what your body, about your body, what you will put on, right? Is, listen to this, read. Is not life more than food and body more than Clothing. Okay, verse 32. For after all these things, the food, the wealth, the money, look what did Jesus say. For after all these things, the Christians seek. No, no, that's the 20, 21st century message. The Christians go after. We need this. We're going to have to have a car. We have to say how rich we are. See, your, your, your car uh, or your house, uh, you know, I've seen, sometimes you've seen some pastors, I'm not blaming them, but there are certain pastors who want to parade that being blessed means this. I agree with that. But it doesn't mean that makes me rich. It's part of the blessing that came because I obeyed God's principles. You see men like Kenneth Copeland, he is a man of faith. He has been blessed by God in so many ways, but he doesn't boast on the things he has. He says, this is what giving does to you. But then there are others I know of who actually pray their car and show their big houses. Just say, yeah, I'm blessed because of this. See how rich I am. No, no, that doesn't make you rich. It's how much they are doing for the gospel. You know, I took brother Kenneth Copeland's name because there's a whole lot of TV programs out there condemning him, saying wrong things about him, and they don't even know him. And I don't know about you, how many have heard about him, but we know we are partners with him. We know what he does with the money. We actually know, we know we've seen those uh, papers, we've sat in their meetings, we know what they do. You know, uh, Ren Rodney, uh, Renard Bonke, you know, anybody knows Renard Bonke? You see these multiple uh, thousands of people who come and get saved. You know who's the major contributor to every service he has? I mean, more than half, Kenneth Copeland Ministries. There are many, many places in America and overseas that look after and they support. So the gospel has been preached. Many missionaries to places nobody will support. Totally supported by them. Totally. So don't judge another person before you've judged your own self. And the only time you can judge somebody else and throw stones at somebody else when you're in their level. See, you can talk about the plane when you have a plane of your own self, okay? Until you don't have a plane, don't talk about another person having a plane. <laughs> I like this. I like this because see, most people judge another person having a car when they themselves don't know. Don't do that because you don't know what it takes to get one. You should rejoice in their prosperity. Somebody built a house. <laughs> I don't know how they built a house. Shut your mouth. Oh, I don't know why they want to wear a fancy. If you can't wear a fancy, don't judge somebody else wearing something. It's not about greediness. It's about knowing the principles of growth. Amen. Amen. Apply it. Verse 32. For after these things, the Gentile, the people who don't believe in God, seek after. For your heavenly Father, that's the message you say. For your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. Come on, church. Say amen. God knows you need money. God knows you need prosperity. God knows you need to pay your children's fees. But he's saying, in order for me to do this, see what God does. See, God doesn't do what you think God will do. God always does something he provoke you to give. God sends Elijah to a woman who's eating her last food, right? Last meal. They're going to die after eating. God sends it to her. He sends him to her and says, she's going to look after you. But she's eating her last meal. And he says, give to me. Huh? Give to you? You think giving will make me live longer? Of course, yes. Amen. Say, of course, yes. So, so you think my giving to God will make me rich? Of course, yes. 
Did you know your giving is the reason why you're still making it? Amen. God didn't say give tithes and offering. Well, we, we don't talk very loudly. You know, in the national television, somebody might hear you say about tithe. The church wants money. I'm not wanting money. God gave you a pro proposition. That means he's giving you an opportunity for growth. He said, if you honor me with your giving, that means you trust me. See, let me tell you what 10%, uh, even the smallest amount is. Giving the 10% of your tithe to God is not about the tithe. It's about trust. It's about honor. When you give that to God, you're saying, Lord, it's not about me. I'm money, it's about you. I trust. That's why you should, people are going, I've, I've seen people going over, uh, and they play around with the giving. Then they, they can't make up their mind. 10% is so simple. 10% is God. Uh, but, um, but take it out of the way. You know, don't question God. It's an opportunity. It's an occasion that you are saying, Lord, I trust you. I give my 10%. I'm not worried about this going. You got 90% left. You can't manage 90%. You're just worried about the 10%. And God's saying that 10% will actually overflow more than your 90%. Amen. Trust Him. Say, trust Him. Trust See, him. let me tell you, you will never overcome and God be rich in God's way or God's side until you learn the power of giving. Your heart should boil up how we can be a blessing to others. When you give something, what's, how do you give? The best from your heart or you think about giving? You should give the best you got at that moment. Guess what happens? Your heart is right in your giving. There's one place you, your heart must be in your giving. That's why the Bible also says, when you give, let it be of a cheerful heart, which you have purpose in your heart. Purpose! Purpose! Thought about it. You chose to give. It should be a choice. Not like, ah, take it. You do that, keep that with you. Don't you ever try to play with God and throw money at Him as if the church needs The church doesn't need it. I know some pastors might need it. We don't. You know, let me tell you, when you give to God, it must be purpose to give. You pray over that before you come here. You don't come here and only pray. You pray at home. Father, I honor you. You're giving me another opportunity for growth. I know the devil wants to tell me that this giving won't work, but this is the only security I have. Government takes your tax away and you pay vet and everything. You gladly give it. And you give that 10% to God, you cry over it. Some of people are still waiting when you're going to catch up with God. Don't you do that. When you honor God faithfully every week, every day, you honor God. And I tell you, heaven's windows, he's, not only did he say well, heaven's windows are going to be open. He said, I'm going to give a devil a good kick. He won't come and touch anything about you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. Glory. Greatest assurance by paying your tithes. Oh, nobody could do it like Jesus. That, that's why the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Brother Edwin, hallelujah, will be added to you. Let me lead to you uh, two more verses, and we'll be finishing here. Luke, let's go to Luke and look at it. <laughs> look at, go to Luke chapter 12 and look at verse 15. Are we, are we there? Come on, I'm there. Let's get there. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Ready? Now, when, when you see this, it's in the same line that didn't, we didn't read other places, but this was mentioned. It's supposed to be have mentioned. This story was supposed to be mentioned in Matthew. I don't know why Matthew didn't write that. And many people have taken only the Matthew part of it and spoiled it all out. Okay? Because if you read... Chapter 12 of Luke. Luke, you know who Luke was? Luke was a doctor. So doctors are very, uh, uh, they, they, they take notice of every detail. They don't miss details, right? Doctors don't miss detail if not it's life and death. Okay. So, so look what, what Dr. Luke does here. He gives the detail that, that Matthew left out. Because if you go down uh, uh, chapter 12, you will see the same thing Jesus said, but he missed out this story. Okay. Are you there in verse 12, 15? Read. This is about, uh, about uh, a story that Jesus says, and it's very important. And he said to them, take heed. What is he saying? Take notice, take heed. Beware of covetousness. Don't become greedy and covetous. Why? For one's life does not consist of the abundance of things he or she possesses. Then he said to them a parable. See, this parable is missing from Matthew. I don't know why Matthew left out this parable. Had he not left out, then your understanding would have been much greater that Jesus was not talking about not having money. He was talking about not money having you. 
me show it to you. He spoke a parable or an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. He said, a ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought, look at here, thought within himself, saying, what shall I do uh, since I have no room to store my crops? That wasn't wrong. And he said, I will do this, that I will pull, pull down the old barns or my barns and I will build greater. Therefore, I will store up my crops in my goods and my goods. Till there, there was no problem. This is where the problem start. And I will say to my soul. You see where the problem was? And after, God wasn't against him building bigger barns, having big stocks and everything. He said this, this is where he becomes a fool. I will say to my soul, he is my assurance. He is my security. I have many goods laid up for many years. Take ease, relax, eat and drink and be merry. Or just marry, marry. But God said to him, you fool. Tonight your soul will be. You know, it wasn't the money taken away. What did God, what did God uh, Jesus say? He didn't say today your money will be stolen. No, 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 no. He didn't say that. See, money was not the problem. He said today your soul will be taken from you. He wasn't talking your money will be stolen from you. He said today your soul will be taken. Then whose money will be? See, he wasn't again money. He was saying, if you have God with money, then you are set. But money without God, you are not set. <laughs> How many of you see that? Don't run after money. Let money be your serving tool, not something controlling your life. I'm going to end here in 1 Peter chapter 6. And, I will, and this is like the nail and a clincher to everything I've been just saying in the name of Jesus. I hope you get this. You run with this. Go and read this over and over again until it settles in your mind. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Only two verses to go. 17 and 18. All right? Ready? You, you there? Come on. Let's read. 1 Timothy chapter 6, reading 17 and 18, 2, 3. Command those who are rich in this present age to sell everything they have? No. Not to be haughty. Not to trust in uncertain riches. Be rich, but don't trust the riches. Come on. Say, be rich. Don't put your confidence in the riches. Don't take security in your riches. Look what it says. Be, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly some things. To do what? To cry. No, no, no. You're not reading with me. Come on. Read with me. Read that verse again. See, the faster you read, the faster you go home. Command. Come on. Come on. Everybody read. Two, three. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, right? Prideful and trusting that. Not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the... And what does the living God do? How does He give? He gives richly. How many things? All things. For what? Woo! You see how what God does? God wants you to enjoy life. He gives you richly all things. He's not against you having money. He's just against you becoming covetous about your money. He's just against you trusting money more than trusting God. Okay, read the last verse and we may rejoice. Let them do good. Hey, what do you do with your money then, brother? Not only give away or sell. This, this is not what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to distribute. That's what he wants. I, you know, the one reason I really want to be rich, so I'm, not only my needs are met, so I can meet the needs of others. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever dreamt about buying somebody a car, buying, just buying a house for them, or just doing somebody some good uh, education, paying for their education? See, don't, not like, uh, 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 let everybody know I'm paying for this education and prayed it everywhere, posted in Instagram and Facebook and every social media that everybody knows what good do, deeds you did. The Bible says, if you get reward from men, they clap for you, you lost your reward. It's all opposite, you know, it's all opposite. If people find out you did something good and they clap for it, Jesus says, you lost your reward. You got it, but you lost it there. <laughs> you want to do good that nobody knows. Only God knows. When you get to heaven, there'll be a line of people saying, thank you for giving to God. Thank you because of your gift. They'll know, God will tell them what happened. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you got the message? It's not trusting money. It's trusting God. 
It's not fighting money. It's trusting God. You know why? Because if God can trust you with giving, He can trust you with more. I'll say that again. If God can trust you with giving, God can trust you with more. You, the Bible says, to whom more is given, more is required. You know, whom did give, Jesus give more to? Not the parable. And not the parable, the story which he said, as to one he gave uh, talents, how about the talents? So when the one guy who didn't do anything with the money, just hid it, and the others invested it, what did, when, when Jesus, uh, the, the man who came for justifying, actually saying, God, what did he do with the, why didn't he take it from uh, the, the man who had least nothing, and why did he give it to the one who had the most? Why not the middle one? No. God always gives more to the one who can actually give more. I always shared, you know, my giving started with cents. And we went to dollars. They went to hundreds of dollars. Now into thousands of dollars. I'm believing they will come. I can give hundred thousand. It will come a day will come. But collectively in a year, you, you don't have to give one thousand one time. I tell you, we, we give, we keep giving, you keep giving. By the time you know you've given tens of thousands of dollars in a year. And you say, literally, if your heart is for God, it will prove. If you are a partner, you will get a statement of your giving. I, mean, I haven't actually looked at it, but uh, Pastor Nikhil and Pastor has actually made that. But I just believe and pray for every one of your partners. I know some give every time faithfully, some give once in a while. Some people scatter shots. Anyway, but, but the point is, you are giving, you can trust God. See, you know my confidence is, because I'm a giver, it will be well with me and my children. Did you know you secure your future with your giving? But your trust is not in the wealth you have. It's in the God you have as your wealth. The life that He gave you. Salvation that I have. I'm never poor. You are never poor. Why? Because poverty is not your possession. Or prosper. Poverty is not your inheritance from the Father. Abundance is your inheritance from the Father. I'm a child of God. What did you inherit? Abundance. What did you inherit? Security. Huh? Yes, I have angels securing me. But I'm afraid. That's why you don't just don't know. But the moment you know, you're never afraid. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for listening with attention. Did you know? It's when we listen with the desire to learn. God also opens up revelation truths to us so that we can see and know the truths He wants to give to you. Brethren, I'm telling you, God's desire for you to be wealthy and provided for. He wants you to have His riches in life so you can be a blessing to others. So the test of wealth is trust. Trust is the test, not how rich you are. It's how God, how much God can trust you. I believe you got the message today. I'm so glad, overwhelmed all the time. We have the opportunity of gathering together and, 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 and sharing to you the Word of God. And you've been inspired and excited to believe God for the good things that God has for you in your life. So let's pray and let's believe God that He will guide you into these truths more and more. Father, I thank you for this wonderful people. I thank you for the joy that we can see and experience right now from your word, that you are an everlasting father, that your desire is that these wonderful people who have heard the message may receive the grace, may receive the blessing to actually increase in finances, increase in riches, not only to have have things, but to have God produce things so they can be a blessing, Father. Lord, help them see the truth. Take away that barrier, Father. You said in your word, if you can believe, all things are possible. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Now I believe that if you will believe this truth, if you will not fight it, brethren, you will experience life in abundance. Now, I've, I shared with you a couple of weeks ago what it was truth, what the truth of Jesus was. So I believe you are blessed. And always remember that God the Father loves you. We love you and pray for you every day. And that Jesus Christ is Lord. Learn more from God's Word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website www.jclm.org or you can like our Facebook page Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season follow us on Instagram JCLMTG
Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel JCLM TV to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry. If you like to host Brother Brian for teaching and ministering at your church or host a conference, you can contact our church office 3315202.